glad to have you back. It's been firework in here in the studio. In <laughs> the program behind the camera Indeed. is most interesting. Where I you must have tell you. women, you have fireworks everywhere, <laughs> and we have a, a human rights activist there. I am there the with only us. man here. Well, sorry, unfortunately, mm. <laughs> we can't reassign your gender. No, I am blessed amongst women. <laughs> we have uh, Emi Oyekunle here with us and Nkechi Oyensu. Uh, Emi, what's your take on Nkechi's view? Uh, talking about women being ready or not. Do you know, we always have this conversation, women are not ready, women can handle it, women don't know how to take leadership. And during the break, I had to go at Nketi and say, why, why should you say that shouldn't even be the topic of the conversation? I don't agree that women are not ready. I agree that the ecosystem where women find themselves in is a little bit tight, is a little bit difficult. Nketi was talking about women in the rural areas not being ready because of their culture. You know, women exist in a society, they don't exist in a vacuum. Mm. So we have to look at that. A few years ago, we started training women, teaching women how to, training women on political participation, on leadership. We met that same challenge. Women were saying, well, you know, we can't do it. Our men won't let us, our husbands won't let us. We decided that, well, we can train women, prepare them. However, we need to realistically deal with the setting that they're going to, create platforms and opportunities that women will access. So we started advocating with men and telling men that, you know what, it would pay you to have women in these positions. It would pay you to have women in the political arena. It would pay you to stop being violent to your wife. It will pay you to stop being violent to your daughters. And we're having a different kind of change. Men and women are working together mm -hmm. and working together to be bold for change, mm -hmm. which is the theme of International Women's Day. So I don't agree that women are not ready. I'm sorry. Okay. I, I, I like to take it from this window because anytime they talk about equality or, and all of that, we always often look very quickly to the issue of being president, being governors, being political leaders and all of that. Let's keep that aside. Yeah. Let's look into the real world where if a man invents anything, a woman should be able to invent anything. If a man, if a man makes this, a woman should be able to make that on the streets everywhere. Let's look from that window right now. Uh, 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 Mkeshi, let me ask you this. You talked about, when you started, you talked about the issue of culture, you talked about the issue of religion, as yes. the case may be. Uh, Amy made a statement as she was talking. She said that women find themselves, find themselves. When the world was created, the man and the woman, were, so we have always been here all together right from the start until now. Yes. When it comes to responsibilities in the society, the women and the men were we made to be the same in everything, apart from the physiology physical changes and all of that. Thank you very much. I would just like to say that the, mm. the advantages of having women on board mm. is very obvious. Yeah. In the corporate world, you know, in some advanced countries, when you have women on your board, the performance of the board is twice as much okay. as when it's an all-man or all-male board. So the benefits you know, of having women on board is clear. But then, are women themselves ready to take this seat is the issue I'm worried about. Mm. To answer your question, let's go through history. Human rights, we can start from the Greeks. That's the main um, the group of people that says talking about any form of rights whatsoever. Mm. Then the Romans adopted it, modified it, but they were talking more about objective rights, not subjective rights. Rights based on your class, on your status, on your religion, not based on the person. Then when we had the coming in of um, modern human rights activists, we started talking about subjective rights. But even at that, that subjective right was mainly a male-dominated discussion. We still having female activists like um, Olympia de Gorge and um, Mary Wathercroft. Those were the first women that came out to say, look, this rights you're speaking about, they are formulated by men to the advantage of men and women you know, as, are not part of what is being discussed. Fast forward to what we have today. Yes. In Kechi, you as a woman. Yes, I am. Would you say you're ready to take up the I am more than ready. In fact, the position I hold now, I'm the first woman to hold it in the past 50 years. There's never been a woman that held the position I hold now where I work. So I am more than ready. But I can't speak because I'm ready. I'll say all women are ready. We have a long way to go. But we you, have Inkechi, a long way to go. We haven't gotten there yes, yet. In Kechi, speak for yourself. Mm. So you say, well, you are in that position. Imagine if somebody else was saying, oh, women are not ready. You say that women are not ready in the community. In, I, I just recently did some work in the Northeast regarding peace and conflict. And they're looking at women 
even as peace reconciliators, women as negotiators, women involved in peacekeeping, women involved in the management of IDPs. You don't have to be ready to do that. You just do it because you have to do that. And women all through history have always done things. When you talk about the skills that are needed, let us be clear. If you're talking about the skills for leadership, which is what men have been exposed and privy to for generations because they have been automatically, because of their gender, oh, a man should lead. They've been privy to skills that some women don't have. But where women, and what, that's what I'm talking about, where women are giving the access, giving the training, giving the opportunity. A level playing field. Exactly. <coughs> they are more than ready. What makes a man, you, you ask the question, which is, oh, uh, gender. If, apart from the fact that he is male and he has a biological organ, I will mention it on TV, <laughs> and she has a, a biological organ, we all have the same thing. If we're talking about capacities of strength, yeah strength a woman a man is stronger in a different manner a woman is stronger yes we have that and that has been god-given biological driven but to say that you have a different capacity for thinking because you're a man no that's not the point i was trying to make okay. no no I, I, that's not the right, point okay, but i'm answering on, his on. question okay, okay. i'm answering his yeah, question okay. because, because if, if you because can't in, hold on, because yeah. finish, yeah. sometimes that is what they think when they think, are women ready, ready for leadership? Are women ready for politics? Oh, it is so much more different. Men can lead because they are stronger. Women are weaker. Those are the arguments that we've had in the past few years. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you that that is not the argument. If it is a matter of skills, matter of negotiation, matter of, of, of being able to work longer hours, women have done it, are doing it, and will continue to do it. Okay, in case That's if we stay, we'll stay with the theme of the year, yeah. what you have is the bold, the sub theme, the real theme for the year, according to the UN, is women in the changing world of work, <coughs> planet 50 50 by 2030. And what the UN is looking at is technological advancement, globalization, and opportunities available to you yes. as a woman yes. in this world of globalization, in this world of technology, how to do more, has to do more with your thinking, not brutal force. That's, that's what the UN is saying. Absolutely. So, so what's your take on My that? My take on that, I'm not talking about the women in the cities. I go back to the East, okay? We have a group of women called Umadas. Now, the greatest discrimination on women are done by women in the East and some other cultures as well. All right. So women, those I'm saying, I'm not saying the whole woman flock is less than a man. Absolutely mm. not. Absolutely not. But we still do have women that think they are less than men. And that's what I'm trying, the point I'm trying to make. Women are more than red. In fact, when given the opportunity, they normally, with all due respect to men, do much better than a man would do in the same position, especially on administrative um, uh, um, functions. But what I'm saying is that you find that in most cultures, the, this, this, the, the discrimination, the inhuman treatment given to women are done by fellow women. Are women ready to take up the change? Women have work to do. They have to work on themselves. You have to do your housekeeping. You just don't come out and say, I'm ready, I'm ready. And then there are a group of women that are pulling down other women. We have to work together as a group. We have to grow as a group. All right. So we are, I'm not saying that we are unable or we are incapable or we are made less than men. Absolutely none. The Bible says we're all one. We're all royal priesthood. But so have women taking that position that belong to them? I do not, change, I do not think so. There are change in, in terms of women, not just elitist women, women in the rural area. That's, that's your point. Yes. Right? Yes. But, but I, went know, to, it, I went to an all-girls school. It, I went to Queen's College. So I've been taught from a very young age that go for it. You can do it. All right. But how many women have that opportunity? Yeah. All right. How Let, many women have been trained like that? Both of you have uh, made references to the Bible. I, I like to take us from... <laughs> the, because the point there is, in Africa, we're very cultural people. We're very That's religious people. That's the truth. But how is the culture that places the man over the woman, that the woman has to submit to the man, Religion in the Bible is the same thing. The woman has to be submissive, although submissiveness is really? relative. Yeah. But in, 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 as far as the Bible from the creation, days of creation and all of that, the woman is meant to help the man because the man is the main thing and the woman as the case may be. But in all of this, mm -hmm. how is religion and culture helping or compounding the issue right now? So let me start by saying culture is not static. Okay. I'm married to a twin. Kendi. Mm. And I always say that if my husband was born in the days of Calabar era, I probably wouldn't be married to a twin. <laughs> Culture is not static. It's constantly and consistently changing mm. by you, by me. Mm. There was a time that, you know, according to culture, you couldn't work, could you? 
But now we work, we both come home with an income. So culture is created by people, right? By the values that we hold dear. And in a consistently and constantly changing society like ours, it is, it is ludicrous to think that, well, you know, women should remain there when she has an, oppor when she, when she has an opportunity to be there. Religion, I am a Christian, so before everybody thinks, but I am also very, very strongly brought up by my parents to know that I can achieve and do anything I want to do. Yes. I am not any less of a human being because I am a woman. So where I, I, I come from that mindset that says, look, if I want to contest in political uh, for a leadership position, hell, hell yeah, let me go and do it. So we take, we pick and choose what we want, isn't it? And that is the reason why we are consistently saying religion says, religion says. There are people that advocate and say that even in churches, even in places of leader, women should take leadership position. Women are taking leadership position. So it's not about religion or culture. It never has been. It's an excuse and a ruse for many of us. In to any do case, the want. Bible didn't say the man is the head of every woman. The husband is the head of his wife. Submit to your Submit husband. Submit to your husband. I don't That's want to go the there because says. there are people that will not write a letter <laughs> okay. saying that. The, 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 that is just being deductive because the point. No, that no, is, that's what the Bible says. Yeah, yeah, you see, you is, see what I mean. That's that what the Bible says. Yes. You, you, you see. The, Excuse me, you never win with an argument when you come to the Bible. Yeah, I agree, totally agree with you because uh, there are w the dimensions of understanding when it comes to that. But let's go on a break and don't forget right now we're going out on TVC Entertainment. Viewers there can continue with the program on TVC Nigeria on DSTV channel 418. Uh, go TV 45 and the CTV 510 in Kechi is here and Emmy is going at it. Stay with us on TVC Breakfast. Right, it's getting really interesting in the studio talking about International Women's Day. And we have in the studio two firebrand personalities in here. And I must <laughs> say, the interesting part of things is still yet to come. Emi on, 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 Oyekunle is here and Kechi Onyen. So we have been talking about this and we have lots of perspective going into understanding why the African woman or why the woman is where she is and where she is supposed to be. Now, every March the 8th is set aside by the United Nations as the International Women's Day. Now, the history of this day goes as far back as the 19th and 20th century when women organized protests and demonstrations in different countries like America, Russia and a number of other countries to demand for better working conditions. We can't forget the uh, Abba women's riot in Nigeria, activities of Margaret Ekbo, activities of uh, uh, Rans Fem Fumilayo. Yeah, Fumilayo Ransom Kuti in Nigeria. And this year, the focus is on the need to draw attention to the need to inspire, support and motivate women across all fields of work and highlight the benefits of educating the female child. And the theme, the something really is, a be bold for change. And by 2030, men and women are perceived to have reached a 50-50 operational level. Last year, there was a theme also talking about uh, uh, gender parity. How far did that went? That's uh, another question. But during historical times, many women achieved many uh, different goals but still remained unequal and inferior to men in the past women could not vote hold normal jobs or even have a place in politics well there are or there were restrictions to the home front and denied many opportunities for cultural and religious reasons this too phenomenon is very pronounced in Africa and it's going to take a little while or some long while before <laughs> that changes Women all around the world have stories to tell of some inhumane treatments meted on them by their spouses, community, bosses and people in positions of influence for the simple reason of being a woman. Mm, it's a man's world. Today, women are gradually uh, stepping out of their role as mothers and housewives to obtain a higher standard of living. More than 70% of women work full of or part-time paid jobs and many of them now earn uh, big uh, wages. This yeah. is coming from the United Nations. And of course, these successes have still not stopped some issues that pose serious challenges to the 21st century women. Women are raped, forced into marriages, abused in their homes, place of work, or even in their communities. Some cultural and religious beliefs restrict girls from getting an education 
or having a social life. Hmm. During war or conflicts, women and girls are most vulnerable. They in particular experience conflict and displacement in different ways from men because of the gender division of roles and responsibilities. Now, violence against women during conflict has now reached epidemic proportions and become an intrinsic part, intrinsic part of the war process in many conflicts. Now, in August 2015, the UN Security Council warned that in Iraq and Syria, sexual violence is being used as a deliberate tactic in war to subdue opponents. Now, problems faced by women such as violence against women include rape and sexual slavery, hunger and exploitation in camps for refugees and internally displaced persons. Inadequate access to health services is one of them, including mental and reproductive health services. Women and girls are also highly at risk for the spread of diseases during sexual encounters such as HIV AIDS and unwanted pregnancies. At the 21st century, women has reported great successes. Some countries have voted and elected women in key positions just like Ellen Johnson Sirleaf of Liberia, who is the first African female president. Another woman is gone in at it right now in Liberia. Liberia. She's a model, really, but mm. she wants to be the president mm. of Liberia. We also had uh, Joyce Banda <laughs> in okay, Malawi. In Malawi. Yeah. And uh, of course, so women now aspire to occupy such top positions, but despite this, more still needs to be done. Globally, only 50% of working age women are represented in the labor force when compared to that's in comparison to 76% of women, of men who are in the labor force as we speak that's i mean a record is coming from the united nations so let's pose this question to you now amy why do you think you have that 56 percent of uh, working uh, uh, age or as, as it were of women compared to 76 of men working full time most of the jobs that women do are, co are considered unpaid care work because of their roles and their responsibilities as women so you find that most of the work that women put in, it's not paid, so it's not recorded as, as paid work. In fact, there, there are campaigns to say that women's unpaid work should be recorded as part of work. What, what kind of work and what dimensions are those kind of work? So most of the roles women take on, again, because of the lack or in access, not so much as the lack, but it, 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 Unpaid work, caretakers. Most of them are in the informal sector. That's, that's you know. Well, the, there's informal sector, yeah. which is trading and uh, yeah. buying and selling and market and everything. But to be honest, you're right, that's informal. But critically, the work is considered unpaid. So women as housewives, women as caretakers of elderly and sick, it's not considered paid work. And it's work still because most of the women, that's what they do. That's their work. And there's this huge campaign and advocacy that you know what we need to record that as paid work in fact we may need to get paid for that kind of work now this is a, is a, you're taking it a notch further really beyond the informal sector we understand the formal sector but the you see that's what we're, <laughs> we're, yeah you're let, taking it a notch further which is back, interesting let's see let's, no, let's go what, back to what let's, 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 let's hear what that's the work has rural to say. women do even when you don't trade when you don't sell bananas and sell a uh, uh, roll i mean uh, biscuit or, or, or granite by the wayside and all you do is take care of your children you should be paid for that do you agree? Well, um, personally, I don't think it's just a woman's job to raise children. I think it's a joint effort. I have said and I've campaigned that um, the woman didn't impregnate herself, somebody got her pregnant. So when the babies come, both hands should be on deck to take care of the babies. Um, in the civilized nation, they've taken, a, taken it a step higher because you have some home husbands that don't work. They take care of the kids at home and their wives do the working. Um, I don't believe um, women should have any less opportunities than men in the workforce because apart from jobs that are based on strength, I don't think there's any other job a woman cannot do. This is why I think women have to be bold to come out and actually take what they know they can do you know, and prove to them what they can do it. The issue now is that most women feel, oh, I can't, I'm not able, they will, they will frown at me. And the issue is the society is frowning at this kind of women. You have a woman, her husband beats her and she leaves the house and the church will say, you have, you have sinned against God. You stay there and pray for the man until he repents. So women are now clustered with that kind of peer pressure, if I may use the word, or oh, what would they say? What would my family think? And then they take 
where the society has put them. Women have to be bold enough to say, no, I am wonderfully and beautifully made. I can do this. I will do this. So help me God. Okay. All right. <laughs> let's bring in uh, Fola Dele to give us uh, a perspective of uh, reactions on social media. Fola, good morning. Good morning, Mike. Good morning, Bussalami. Good morning, morning Nketi. Good morning, Amy. Very interesting and heated. Very, very heated one this morning, I must say. You know when it comes to women, we get really yeah, passionate about our very, issues. Mm. Okay, so let's see what um, some people are saying online. Oyelala Ogunide says, Celebrating women in Nigeria who don't know what feminism means because they didn't go to school yet achieved success in communities they're in. The Peacock says, women in Nigeria see heavily oppressed, uh, oh sorry, are heavily oppressed under the guise of culture and we can't keep ignoring it. Fisaya Longe says, uneducated women in Nigeria are at such a disadvantage. And what Debabatunde says, let's come together to stop all forms of violence against women in Nigeria. Kate Osamo says, unless the lives of girls and women in Nigeria are improved, Nigeria will not meet the SDG. If Nigeria fails, Africa fails. Ugona says, there is a certain type of career success you can't reach from your husband's house if you marry early as a woman. Mm. In yeah. brackets, Nigeria especially, you know I'm coming to you on this. <laughs> and someone replied to that, I agree. In general, marriage in Nigeria prevents women from achieving their full potential, even well-educated, wealthy women. And the last one here from Dr. Joabai says, I have a dream that one day Nigerian women will mobilize themselves and demand a better Nigeria, that they will march and say enough. Mm -hmm. Amen. About women riot. So let's go back <laughs> to, you know, the discussion about, or the tweets rather about how if, you, if you're married in Nigeria, there's only a certain level you can, a certain level of success. There's only a certain level you can reach. If you're married early, I think the world is early. If you get it, that's well, you, no, you're married because early. when you follow the thread, it wasn't even a discussion about early because she later went on and talked about how there are a few exceptions to the rule, but the people who have really attained success in Nigeria are either um, maybe they got married late or um, they're not married. Do okay. you, what do you think about that? Cool. And we had a lot of people agreeing with that. Well, any of you, to be honest, I, w I want Amy's reaction, but I see in Kechi smiling, so I actually want to hear what both <laughs> of you have to say. I'm married. So and I'm am quite I? successful. Mm. God. And I'm reaching the pinnacle with my husband beside me. Whoa, mm. that's because good. if he doesn't try, I'll pull him by the ear. <laughs> mm. The point I hope he's is, watching. Oh, yeah, no, he's taking the children to school today. <laughs> 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 no, no, I, and I don't mean that to belittle my husband. I, I, it, I got married at 27, which is considered late compared to so many people. But still, I got married when I was ready. I got married after I've had two masters. Uh, gone to school, he was beside me, he encouraged, and he's still encouraging me to reach the highest potential I can reach. However, I'm bearing in mind that I do have children to take yeah. care of, and I have a partner, and we need to work together. So it's a consistent, and there's no formula when you get married that, oh, you are successful or not. And I see that with many people. Having said that, I have friends who have gotten out of marriages because it wasn't right. Yeah. They met a partner who didn't who didn't support their dreams or who didn't fulfill it or they were too young or immature to come together to understand what they wanted and i think that marriage at the end of the day is subjective to what you want there are those who are not married who are in their 40s 50s and are lamenting and wishing that they are married so either which way you look at it is not an argument that you can win i know that i'm speaking from my perspective that i am married i'm happy i'm married once in a while i want to club him on the head but the point is, we get each other. <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, no time. Can uh, I quickly take him? Yeah, but we have to go on a break oh. now. Okay. So uh, maybe stay with us okay. here. Let's go on a break. <laughs> and then we come back. We're discussing International Women's Day today. It's really getting interesting in the studio. Stay with us. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> it's fireworks in well, here. I'm saying that the, again. It's exclusive to us here. The program behind the cameras, you won't have it. You won't see it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, for like, yeah, you're yeah, still so here. Yes, it was getting very interesting. Mm. I wish they could see what goes on, <laughs> you know, during the break. But yes, Nkechi, um, feel free to go ahead. So I was asking that, do you agree with the tweets that there's only a certain level you can, um, a certain level of success you can attain as with a married, married woman in Nigeria? I think you as a woman need to make up your mind what you want. Okay? Pretty early. Marriage is a partnership. It should build you, not kill you. Mm. So if you set the, 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 the parameters, okay, I love you, you're the 
sugar of my tea, the honey of my whatever. Mm -hmm. I want to get married, but I have a dream. Can you see my dream? Exactly. And so lay your cards out. Yes. There. What if you start out early. seeing my dream and then along the line you, you don't see it anymore because it's, it's not what I thought it would be? You know, I'm talking about your dream as in your career, not as in the marriage. Yeah, yeah, no, of course. But what if the husband says, okay, I understand what your plan is, your career path is, okay, let's do this. Mm -hmm. And then along the line, he finds that, oh, actually, this thing is taking us. Especially if you were young, when you got married, exactly. there's that tendency but you that see, you might be confused. It's not and later so you, it changes. And yeah. it, as a partnership, it changes. Yeah. If he stops seeing it, at some point in time, if you are very accepted and observant, you will know that, oh, at the point in time, my husband was like, this your development work is getting, is getting... And I knew I had to soft pedal just a tad, mm. a little bit. Okay, so you did soft pedal. Wisdom, did. wisdom will lead you into these things. Mm. Because if you value your marriage, yeah. because you have a career, you don't have to throw away your marriage because you have a career. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Neither would you want to say, okay, fine. Career can go to... So you have to learn yeah, how because to you have a marriage. Yeah, exactly. You have to That's strike. It. So see, wisdom, see wisdom Bill is and how... Bill and Hillary. I'm sure at one point in time, well, it's probably not a good example, but there's a best example. <laughs> yeah. I can, and, it, you know, she, he wanted to be president. She supported him throughout his career and yeah. it's your turn to support him. Yeah, yeah. And he's standing by and his he wife. was behind him yeah. all the way. All the way. Wow. But that's it was beautiful. The United States. Beautiful. I mean Nigeria it, exactly. is in, in fact, we, we, we in do fact, have, ex it we is have good. examples, not as much, mm. but we do have a few exactly. we do have a few examples mm. in Nigeria. I, I remember but, but it, it, Joy Weller there as the Minister of Finance. Yeah. And the reporter go. that the, there was a time the husband came, we were having a fact meeting, the husband came and sat at the back of the hall. Didn't this, the mm. woman was all over the place. Uh, professor, late the professor place, Dara Kumi is the same And, and yeah. I told her what she said, meet my husband. And we're all like, oh my God, this is, you know, but, this is the man behind the woman. But you know what I see <laughs> in all of those things? Mm. The husband recognized that star, that something in my wife. She can do it. She can get it. They were not intimidated or even if they were, they sorted it out very early. That intimidation that, mm. oh, my wife is the most yeah. successful. And the wives recognized that my husbands are the wing beneath my wings. Yeah. And it was, it is that kind mm. of this thing. I see for many young couples or many young women, they, there's that pride and there's that, not I'm blaming anybody, but there's that, oh, look at, I'm working, I'm doing this, I'm, mm. you know, and you, you know, we're in, we're in the Nigerian culture. Eh? No. Eh? Culture is not static. I know I said so. So, so uh, we, but, we, but you know, the my culture was question is coming. Okay. All right, ladies, all right, ladies, all right, ladies. Well, I have to let you go now. Oh, I want to stay. Please, please go. Thank you. <laughs> all right, thank you. It, it's really interesting. But let, let's take this report now. The women in Nigeria have been encouraged to be courageous, fearless, and dare to unionize and organize as a means of achieving positive change in the country. Sharon Jason was at one of the events to commemorate the International Women's Day. Guest speaker at the event, Fumi Komala first spoke on how women participation in trade unionism can improve the nation. We must address issues of the physical sense. And how do we do it? Unionism. Women that have been in the union, it hasn't been an easy struggle at all. But I know that as women, we have the capacity. We have the capacity to wade through these struggles and come out tall and stand tall. But then we cannot do it without the understanding and support of our male colleagues. I mean, take it or leave it. Vice President of the National Council of Industrial Global Union on his part says the international body recommends 40% of women participation in workplace. 40%. You know, representation of women in all the leadership position of our, for our fleet unions. Uh, now, there's a lot of challenge in that. Uh, the major challenge is that first you must encourage women participation. The only way women will make a difference, whether it's at the workplace, maternity, equal pay for equal work, uh, at the larger society to fight against violence for peace, is that they must be involved in the way leadership was, I mean, uh, decisions are made. Women were similarly urged to improve on their attitude in workplace environment, increase their confidence and improve their overall knowledge of happenings around the world. Sharon Ijasson, TVC News, Lagos. All right, women have to get involved. We often hear of, um, in the workplace, apart from the ideal, the, the ideal of you work, he works, you work, and you have to you have the ability or have the capacity, you have the opportunity to rise to whatever level. But informally, we often see some kind of a, today I'm not feeling well, I don't want to come to work, and 
in true terms, you just want to rest. Amy, can you talk to that? True. Hmm. There are uh, attitudes of, you know, very mediocre kind of workplace yeah. attitudes that affect both men and women. I need to be clear when I'm speaking oh, because sure. when well, you're yeah, speaking from a gender point of view, you need to be. Men play hooky, men play sicky, they pull sicky. It's not just women. <laughs> women, they think women more so because of the fact that, oh, she, oh she's pregnant again, or women take maternity leave or whatever, and that's what affects women. We need to understand that because of their biological make makeup, that yes, so women would have those um, issues, but nevertheless, it's not an excuse. I did a training last year in a bank, a well-known bank, and we were talking about gender parity. And they said that when you start, when you, women start off, you see them a lot at the bottom, when they start at cashiers or as tellers or whatever. Mm, or but as you go up the pyramid, you find that they dwindle. Then at the top, you probably, if at all, find one, if you find one at all. And we asked, why was that? Now the men said, well, they are lazy. They are always taking, they are always getting pregnant. It's the women, they don't want it. <laughs> and the women on their own part, they, most, some of them didn't want it. We needed to go into why they didn't want it. And you find that many of them, when they started, they were single in the bank. At some point in time, they got married. At some point in time, they had to do childcare. At some point in time, they got pregnant and, and so on and so forth. And they just didn't want those responsibilities because it wasn't conducive enough. So I encourage, we made recommendations for the bank to, okay, why don't you think about having a crash? For example and you know what that will do it will not only encourage women to bring their kids it will encourage men too because some days if the woman has to go to work the child is sick the man can there's a crash down he can bring his child because like she said child care child really is both men and women they thought about it differently they didn't they, i mean they're making the changes i think but they thought about it differently and that's the reason why some of the things that we have exist Okay, uh, Ngechi, your, your take on that? I totally agree with that. Okay, well, I think so both men and women can be lazy, not just women. Okay, so let's move on to the issue of the cultural interference and the belief of the, the, boy, uh, the boy child and the girl child, which is more prominent in some parts of uh, our country. Now, should that still subsist in the Nigeria of today? I don't think so. I think we have um, come so far, like she said, we had the time we're killing twins. We had a time women were not allowed to work. We had a time women were allowed even to preach in churches. We are supposed to just sit down and listen. We've, we've come so far. Culture, um, change is, 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 is constant and culture changes. Today, Nigeria today should look at women as at par with men. I love the Yoruba culture for that because their male children inherit, their female children inherit. Not all cultures permit that. Mm. So that's why you have some people when they well, have just girls. Thanks to the Chief Justice of Nigeria, when he was a judge at the Supreme Court, he ruled in favor of female children, Igbo land, now getting yes. a part of the largesse. That's the law. <laughs> but they that's are fighting the law. Yeah. <laughs> well, what is this? But that's the law, the, but the, the culture, what is the implementation? Yeah. Yes. We have enough laws. If we look at the, our criminal system, we have enough laws not mm. to have any crime. Mm. But we still have crime because the people themselves have not taken those laws and owned it as their own. That's the change we need to fight for. The laws are there, as you have rightly said, to give women that power. You have this power, the law has enabled you. But you will find women themselves saying, no, I don't think I should. What will people say? That's where I think Nigerian women should concentrate on this year. We need to change, we need to attempt to change that mindset. For those of us that have a different mindset, we need to find as much as possible, you know, find formal or informal means to talk to these women, you know, talk them through it. Look, you can be something, not just what your husband says you should be. You don't answer his label. All right. Let, let, me, let me take it from the question uh, she asked earlier on. Even here in Lagos, Lagos, that is, is seen like the pinnacle of somewhat enlightenment in Nigeria. We could do no more, certainly. Yeah, exactly. But the point there is, even here in Lagos, Ladies, when they get married, and then as friends, we all ladies, and you're married, and you give birth. Oh, she gave birth today. Okay, is he a boy or a girl? Mm -hmm. He's a girl. Mm -hmm. Okay, congratulations. He's a boy. Mm -hmm. Ah, congratulations. <laughs> who are Amongst you, but, girls. I'm, I'm sorry. It, so the, who are the, who educated? The, the, exactly. So when he, we're talking about people who are enlightened. Yes. Yeah. So when it comes from that perspective, are the ladies who are supposed to take the torch? Are they enlightened enough so that we don't create a world where the, the women are fighting the men? Yes. No, it is, you know, it becomes a confrontation between genders. Can I first start by saying that women are not necessarily a homogeneous group? Mm. So the fact that 
you know, you are a woman, I'm a woman, we, we don't necessarily have to agree. I mean, if that is the case, Hillary would have won the election in America, wouldn't she? But the point is, we need to understand it from that mindset, that we are not a homogeneous group, that we, 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 we differ according to class, according to age, according to social status and background. But we also differ according to how you were socialized and how you were brought up. She was brought up in Igbo culture. I'm Niger Delta. Um, my husband is Yoruba. And you see that at that point, all of us have different ways of looking at things. I had a girl first. In fact, I prayed to God to have a girl first. I wanted a girl first. And not, and people well, like, if you don't have a boy, and if I don't have a boy, well, so be it. Because a child is a product of both you, my husband, and myself. Besides, he's the one that gave me the girl. That means it's exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so the most men don't even know that. Exactly. So, you, no, you say, know. you the say, you yeah. say, you say women know. who are educated and enlightened. Education is not when you go to university and spend four years and you pass and come out with a half, half, half degree. That's not only education. Education is about using, yes, the knowledge and the wisdom that you have to make an impact in the society that you find yourself. So, yes, there will be people that say, ah, only girls, she only has only girls. Educated women, ah, there are women like that. There are women in the rural society or women in society that says, ah, Look at you, you're aspiring for president or vice president. Who will be cooking for your husband? And tomorrow when the husband follows somebody, they say, eh, she cost it. Is it not her that is going to aspire? There are those, but that shouldn't deter us from fulfilling your God-given ability mm -hmm. and potential. Mm -hmm. Because we all have a, an ability to lead. Okay. Uh, let, let's go on a break again, mm -hmm. and then we come back. But don't forget that uh, top of the hour will be time for the news update again with Aziza Tomahalua. But let's go on a break now. Right, we're almost coming to the end of this discussion, but it feels like we just started. It's the International Women's Day, and we have uh, Amy Oyekunle with us right here. We have Nkechi Onyen. So we've been talking about so many things. In a few minutes, we'll be going for the news update, and we'll be ending the discussion soon. But we can't but ask this question, Nkechi. On a day like this, how do you commemorate? What are you doing to commemorate a day like this? I'm here. I'm speaking to women. Right. And I intend to have programs. In fact, I've lined up programs with some rural women in the Ojota area later on this evening. And um, I just want to encourage, I keep encouraging women um, to come out of their, sh their shell and be what God has called them to be. I was sharing before we went on break. Um, I come from a family of um, three girls and a boy, and it took my mother over a decade before she had a boy. And I, I, I didn't like the whole family setup because we're all girls. And Instead of that pulling us down, it motivated all of us to be professionals. All of us are professionals. So we, we don't have to take the label that has been placed on us as women. We should come out, you know, and realize who we are and do the best we can to achieve it, to be bold, to make a change, even when you're the only voice that's speaking at the time. Okay, so being bold at home, uh, Emmy, what's your take on that? Well, uh, yeah, being bold at home, it takes more pressure than, I mean, sometimes it's easy for us to come and speak and say all these things. Mm -hmm. But it's a conscious effort. Yes. Uh, I was telling that I have uh, three children, two boys and a girl. Uh, and my daughter, my son, I consciously make that effort where by like I'm in the kitchen and my son comes or my daughter comes in. I'm like, go and call your brother. Come and see what I'm doing. And, you know, I, 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 I needed to tell myself that I needed to be real inside my home and outside my home. So. It is a lot of effort to be bold in your home, especially when you have that <laughs> setup where the man is still understanding, come, what are you saying and all that. So you need to balance it out. Um, to answer your question also about what I'm doing to commemorate, I, I wear many hats. Mm -hmm. And so one of the hats is I am internally a feminist, but I also am part of women's organization like Zonta International. And one of the things that we're speaking out is say no to violence. It's really important on a day like this right. because as much as we are also... As a matter of uh, Jamaica, their own theme for this year is on violence. They are not following, exactly. they're not they're following, following, they're the, following the international. Because it, it, is, right. it is an issue and we need to always use the mm. opportunity to speak up and say no. Yeah, I, I, I think uh, regions across the world would take it, domesticate it based on your peculiarity. Yeah. Yes. And uh, if, you, if you follow dimensions in development in Jamaica, you know why they had to go to that line. But let's go for the news update now. Uh, Azizat is already standing by. Azizat, it's all yours now. Thank you, Micah. Well, women cannot be celebrated enough. Imagine a world <laughs> without women. 
Well, convicted former governor of Adamawa State, James Ingilari, says he will appeal the High Court judgment, sending him to jail. Ingilari was sentenced to five years in prison without option of fine after being found guilty of corrupt practices. His counsel, Samuel Tony, had pleaded for leniency in view of Ngalari's invaluable contribution to the fight against insurgency when he served as governor of Adamawa State. The Yola High Court found the ex-governor guilty of all five counts of conspiracy to award contracts amounting to $500,000 without compliance with due process. Nigeria's Foreign Affairs Minister Goffrey Onyema has dismissed rumors that more than 100 Nigerians have been killed in the ongoing xenophobic attacks in South Africa. The minister, who will be leading a delegation to the country next week, said no life was lost and that the Nigerian government has been engaging with the relevant authorities in South Africa. He also says there is no diplomatic row between the United States and Nigeria. Acting President Yemi Oshimbajo has sworn in Justice Walter Anaya as the substantive Chief Justice of Nigeria. Oshimbajo charged the new Chief Justice to resuscitate the confidence of Nigerians in the judiciary. He gave this charge at the swearing-in ceremony of the new CJN at the presidential villa in Abuja. Anaya pledged his complete loyalty to the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The second highest national honor, the Grand Commander of Order of the Niger, GCON, was also conferred on the new CJN at the event by acting President Oshimbajo. And that's all on the news. Update on the show is back to Mike Ambusolami for the rest of the program. Thank, Thank you. you. Aziz. We are still here. We are wrapping up now on our discussion on the International Women's Day. Emi Oyekunle is still with us and Nkechi Oyen. So I hope I pronounced your name correctly. Yes. You're still, Oyen, so you're still here with us. Okay, so we, you were talking about violence uh, before we went on that uh, news of this break. Why is it cogent? Do you know, violence against women is, a, is almost like an endemic, <laughs> epidemic issue that affects many women not just in nigeria but across the world and the reason it being is again the perception of what a woman is she's a property she's second class and all those perceptions of what she is and so it happens in the workplace it happens in the home and one of the things that makes it really really cogent is the fact that it's silent there's a there's a there's a silence about it if it happens a woman as educated as she is, dressed up, wealthy, successful, spotting a black eye with dark shades, you know, she's been beaten or emotionally, like physically, exactly, because <laughs> we have makeup, thank God for the kind of makeup we have. <laughs> and she's emotionally, physically uh, battered and abused. And there are a lot of women who go through that. So before, a long time ago, I was talking to a woman who, wealthy, we were trying to raise money for a campaign on violence. And she told me that, oh, it's only um, poor women that get abused. And I told her, I'm sorry, I beg to differ, that there are many women in their homes, and they won't let you know, they won't tell you, because it's considered shame. Don't expose what you do or what is going on in yeah. your home. It's a private matter. Okay. And that is wrong. Uh, we, we don't have all the time right now, but we must thank you, ladies, mm -hmm. for coming. Emi Oyekunle, thank you very much. Thank and you. And Kichi so thank you for coming on the program. Thank this you. Thank you very much. All right, this is uh, it's all, always very interesting to talk about women, but this is where we have to round off this discussion right now. I will be coming up with our next discussion shortly. Thank you very much.